there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome, welcome back to another Thursday, which means it is time for another nice watches Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Oh, boy. So, in the last episode, we had an episode that really wasn't all that great. Like, just kind of failed any sort of story structure. Like, even... Even, like, Eastern story structures, where they usually go for a four-act format, whereas, you know, in the West we go for three. Um, yeah, it just kind of meandered along and didn't really amount to anything. Like, there were a couple things where I was like, hey, this is pretty alright, but they still just kind of petered out into fucking nothing. Um, so, I'm hoping that, you know, that's just like a one-off, and it's going to get better. <laughs> You know, I, but let's see, shall we? Let's see how we do. Uh, and it looks like we're starting out in the shopping district based on the first frame. Uh, God. I guess, I guess, I guess they, they still wheel you spin with anime adaptations. Huh? One episode might just suck because it's going from a really poor chapter. But let's see, shall we? In three, two, one, and go. Oh boy, okay, starting out right again with the rivalry going... No, but they need to assert their dominance, though. I've never even eaten regular tofu. I didn't even know it came in fried. What the fuck? At first, they tried to kiss. Oh my god, she's doing a Halo 5. God, or was it Halo? No, it was Halo 4, wasn't it? God, you guys remember when, like, Halo 4 was gonna be, like, a thing with Master Chief in, like, a cool cloak making his way through a desert? God, what the fuck happened? Holy shit. Oh. Man. What, what happened? Like, what happened, like, just in general to advertising, you know? Like, they whole-ass, people, like, advertise shit before they even know what the fuck they're doing. There were whole-ass action figures on sale with Master Chief in that cloak, and it never even happened in the fucking game. That trailer was the only fucking time that cloak was ever seen. Jesus. Ugh. It's like, hmm... Yeah, fucking, there's Kana. Like, like, I, <laughs> look straight up like the, like f how Faye does in Spider. Is there some part of, like, Japanese myth about fluffy dragons that I'm just sailing right over my head? Like some visual shorthand that they're supposed to be that I'm just completely missing? In the Middle East? What? No! Which means you're going to have to murder her, huh? Nope, just another dumbass dragon. Speaking of dumbass dragons, how does nobody notice the barefoot bitch with the horns sticking out of her head? Like, deadass, how has nobody noticed these girls with the horns? How's no one look at them and be like, hmm, there's weed? I mean, Kana can make her horns disappear. Like, why does it seem like Toru doesn't, like, isn't able to? 
I mean, Elma can, at the very least. Enjoying all of the- all of the chaos, probably. So you went to the Middle East, the one place on Earth that has the most bloodiest history fucking in its entirety. Amazing. But they're delicious! They're like really long pigs. The oddball, the oddball fatty. I guess it's nice. I guess it's good to see that Elma has always been like a gourmand. Guess it's lucky that dragons don't get fat, huh? That... Well, that didn't go the way I expected it to. Jesus! So did Toru actually, like, help her save some villages? Or did they just- or did she just sit back while, El while Elma just... Elma was just more interested in stuffing her fucking face. As you do. Now, I mean, that, no, I mean, that's just what you do. I don't get it, Kobayashi. What, what part of this is hard to understand? That is a fair point. <laughs> that is a very fair point, holy shit. Re yeah, look how that wound out for the fucking man emperor of mankind. Strapped to a golden throne while his space marines murder anyone who looks slightly different. Yeah, no, I mean, Toru 100% is in the right here. Elma allowed a... Elma allowed a religion to take root. And religion- and the religion's just gonna... turn into some fucked up shit. If you knew it wasn't going well, then why didn't you stop it, you dumb fatty? Literally every th the only reason she didn't is because she's a fucking fat ass. Jesus Christ. Good to know this show is diverse enough to show all sorts of fetishes. Aw, oh, they kissed and made up. <laughs> And also destroyed the entirety of the Middle East, blasting it into the, in, onto Earth.
Damn. Damn, Kobayashi just out here completely deconstructing their entire lives. Tasting humans is also a good way to taste their culture. The bestest friends. <laughs> Fucking fat asses. Like, seriously, like, if they weren't dragons, they'd probably be, like, fucking 400 pounds. Jesus Christ. Hey, all right, time for the lolly that everyone complains about. For really dumb reasons. But at least she figured out hands! I didn't actually notice when she figured out hands, but hey. She probably figured them out like two episodes ago, and I just wasn't paying attention. But still, it's nice to see. Get a job, you lazy lolly! Toru also doesn't have a job. Also, she's the maid of, like, a fucking two-bedroom apartment. I be <laughs> I'm sure there are several websites that would employ her. <laughs> oh god, if you really want to torture her, make her work retail. Behold, the ultimate human torture, working at Walmart. The customers hate you, your management hates you, corporate hates you, and you hate you. On you go. Classic Catholicism. <laughs> Can't just hang out with little with little girls like that. Come on now, you little shitter. Oh, damn, they just out they just out here playing Beyblade. Oh my god, are they gonna get her a job at Are they gonna get a Lulu a job at the fucking game store?
She sells Games Workshop figurines at exorbitant prices. This space marine costs 7 million yen. Because it would make the chillin sad. How to <laughs> how to make a Lulu grow up and hate children? Make her work in a store that caters exclusively to children. I mean, hey, at least she gets along with the children. She's at the same fucking mental space at them as them. It is kind of fucked up to think that Kana is more mature than fucking Alulu. When Kana is a fraction of her fucking age and is actually a child. <laughs> like, fucking Alulu is an actual man-child. Oh my god. She chose it because she had a spur of the moment. Which isn't exactly the best way to decide your future, but I guess when you're an immortal dragon, it's whatever, right? Damn, Lulu out here getting all the fucking head pats. Fucking head pat slut! Gotta read the room, Toru. Hooray! I do like that we're coming back to this, like, as, as the episodes go through, just bouncing back to their time hanging out. Do y'all even need kindling? You can just make fire. Kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh, jeez. No, the sizing is just to fit her giant fucking sweater hogs. Jesus Christ. That's what they're telling people. Jeez, okay then. Can't believe Lulu is about to get her own human to hang out with. The big twist! Take is a lolicon. Perfect match. Damn, can't believe it. She found her own human. Yep, there it is! <laughs> Go to jail! <laughs> Jesus, fuck mother in Christ, holy shit.
Yeah, I can't believe Lulu's actually getting this down. Amazing. <laughs> hey, there's the there it is. That's where it comes from. Damn, I can't believe the elementary schooler at dead ass ass. Hey, do they hurt your back? Damn shame. Well, working at a, at a, at, in retail aimed directly at kids, that'll make you hate children real fucking quick. Damn, outright just... My man's out here be like, nah, girl, I'll teach you how to Beyblade. <laughs> Second to Kobayashi. Because Beyblade's still a thing. Like, I remember it from when I was, like, a kid in, like, the like mid-2000s, and I just do not... Oh, just do not have any context for Beyblade after that. Like, I know there was an anime that had dragons coming out of the top, so I don't know anything about... Eh. Hinjaku, Hinjaku. I know they didn't say that, but whatever. Damn, nailed her down. Shit. She also wishes for something to wash it down. God, everything with hers is food. Hey, alright. Well, that episode was better, at least. At the very least. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, boy, all right. So, I'm still, I'm still thirsty. I've drank like two balls of water like today. I'm still fucking thirsty. Jesus. Uh, guys, so, uh, it, it rained earlier and now it's like so fat. Ah, shit, fuck. It rained earlier and it's so goddamn hot. Holy fuck. Oh, jeez. Okay. Um. So. This episode, um, definitely like it a lot more than the previous episode. Um, for one, it, I feel like there was actually a bit of a fucking narrative thread going through it, so that's fun. You know, that's good. You know, the baseline of storytelling, that's, yeah. Always good to, to have the fundamentals down. Um, and we had really two... We, we had two storylines in this one, instead of, like, you know, just bouncing between a bunch of them. And, and both of them are really good. Um, on their own, they probably wouldn't have stood by themselves, which, you know, is good. Like, the Alulu one, maybe. They would have to expand on it. Oh, good! <laughs> oh, good, we have the return of the pedophile. Uh. All right. So, God, like all the to all the Elma's talk of food made me hungry. <laughs> um. Okay. So, so the story of like Elma and Toru like hanging out in the past in fantasy Middle East 
like that was a pretty that was pretty good and it, the, uh, but i do feel like it was mostly just little skits of them you know hanging out and being cute it wasn't really intended to tell a full story um it told small chunks of a story and that's fine honestly seeing as it's functionally the b plot of the episode that's fine and it worked really well it, it's nice to see elma and toru in like a setting that's honestly more natural to them because them hanging out in the human world is is good and all but kobayashi even says it's like you're too busy being fat and working at my at my office and you're too busy being a maid and being docile like you know like their 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 original personalities don't really get to shine through but their new ones do all the time but seeing as they are hundreds or thousands of years old that's like the like we really only know them for like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of like what their life experience is so having like little these little flashback sequences where we see them going around meeting humans like being friendly but not friendly like frenemies kind of stuff and then at the very end seeing like the big blowout that leads to the animosity they have for each other in season one I like that. That's pretty fun. And it, it's just kind of nice to see more of the dragon world. Because, you know, we don't really see it all that often. Like, more often than not, it's just the, dra it's the dragon world bleeding into Earth instead of the other way around. And that's... That's pretty fun. I like that quite a bit. Um, I will say uh, that I'm not a giant fan of Elma's characterization back in the dragon world. where Because it's basically just... I'm fat. I enjoy helping humans because they get to give me food. Like, I don't know, that's a little... Eh. It's like, I feel, I feel like for our introduction to who Elma is as a person, like, it gels really well with how she is now, but maybe I'm, like, misremembering, but I remember her being a lot more... A lot more zealous in season one so maybe you know like the the zealotry is isn't the real her and the being a greedy piece of shit that kind of just wants to help out is her real personality and so she's kind of returning to that and then something happens after their big fight that leads her to that zealotry but still it's kind of weird because we we're, we're, we're kind of missing a middle bit here and it I don't know. Like, it's not bad, it's just a little, like, hmm, I wonder what's going on there. Um, seeing a, seeing a bit more of their time in Dragon World would be nice, but they probably shouldn't overdo it, so I'm glad they're only giving it to us in little bite-sized chunks. Um, the Alulu story for this episode is a lot better, I like it quite a bit, um, and it definitely uh fits her a lot and it solves the issue of Elulu, what the fuck are you doing you goddamn fucking freeloader um and her working in a in a candy candy and game store is 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 pretty you know it, it's in character it's fun i like that um because i think like a main thing with Elulu that's been an issue so far is she's kind of reverse kana like so Kana is a child. Like, Kana is, like, 300 years old, but to a dragon, that might as well be eight. So, like, Kana... Kana is a child. She looks like a child. She is all that. But because she's lived so long, by, by fucking grace of living 300 years, she's very, very mature. So she just comes across as a mature child. And... And you know what I mean when I say it like that. You know, like, the kind of child that's kind of, like... It's clear they've seen some shit. You know what I mean? Like... No, it's it's like, hmm. Like, yeah, no, that kid, hmm. That kid's awfully stoic, hmm. Like, whereas, like, you know, instead of, like, other kids like Shota or Saikawa or any of the other children in the show where they're all, like, super childish, she's like, yeah! Like, Kana has her moments of, yeah! But for the most part, she's like, oh, hi. I'm Kana, hello. You know? Whereas, like, so it's like, you've got that, and it's like, you know, that's cool. And that's kind of endearing, because it's like, because it's it's something you can look at and be like, hey, yeah, I understand that. And then you have a Lulu this whole time, and she's like, 
acting super fucking childish, but she's like Toru's age. And it's like, it's like a weird reverse of Kana, and I've always felt kind of weird about it. Like, I'm like, hmm. Hmm. And I understand it's because she has unresolved trauma from when she was Kana's age, but still, it's weird. Um, like, from a meta perspective, at the very least. But, like, having her in a, in a place now where she can kind of indulge that man-childliness, um... I don't know, it's kind of neat. And maybe being able to hang out and run the game and candy store for human children will be what she needs to progress and, you know, get over her past, you know, or at least, like, re recontextualize her past to be kind of less fucky. Who knows? It, it's a really, really good fit for her, at the very least. And it does actually fill in a massive gap in her characterization, whereas, like, she kind of needs that, you know? Like... Up until this point, like, she's kind of just been stewing. And that's not really something you want to see in a character. Because the more a character stews and the more they remain stagnant, the less interesting they become. You want your characters to be dynamic for them to be able to roll with the punches of the story. Instead of just sitting in Kobayashi's apartment eating fucking crisps and, and drinking soda. It's like... Ah, it's it's... It's a pretty neat it's a pretty neat thing. You know, it's a pretty neat change to the characterization and I'm honestly surprised it took this long, but eh, it's whatever. Like a character like Lulu is honestly kind of weird. I if I was writing a story, I probably would not intro I probably would not include a character like that. But then again, I try not to include child characters in in stuff I write anyway because they're annoying. <laughs> Not, like, annoying as in, like, oh, man, I'm gonna make Steve Urkel, like, in, you know, that level of annoying, but, like, when you're writing a child character, you have to walk a very, very thin line, and, and even characters that are physically adults but act like children, you need to walk a really, really thin line, because it's, it's just, you, because if you are ever so slightly off, it comes across as uncanny, and it immediately takes the reader out. Where, like, you know, like, like, you can have someone acting childish, but you can't have someone acting childlike, because childlike is a very specific thing. But, but whatever, whatever, I'm hungry. Like, all, like, all of Elma's talking about food fucking make me hungry, so I'm gonna go get something to eat. Let me know what you thought of this episode down there in this, uh, down there in the, in the comments, whether you liked it, you disliked it, or you wanna bring up something I left out, because that is entirely possible. Oh, Boy, if you have any other remarks or or stuff, because hey, I honestly I'm still answering like comments and shit from like videos from like three plus years ago. I usually have to rewatch the video itself to do so, but I still still do. So yeah, let me know down there in the comments. As always, everybody, I am Nozovix. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share social media, tell your friends, hit the share button down below, and if you want, you can always support me on Patreon, which is linked down there in the description and on the end card. If you want more content from me, then I do try and post anime every single day at around noon. And I also try and live stream every single day at around 3. Uh, I believe that if you're watching the day this comes out, which is August the 5th, um, I am going to be streaming, but I think it's going to be closer to 4 because I have a thing i got to do. Um, and we're going to be streaming either Metopia. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise, or I'll just be playing, I don't know, Halo for a bit. I don't know. This week's kind of a grab bag, but it's probably going to be Metopia or Monster Hunter Rise. So I hope to see you there, because those games are fun. But anyway, as always, everybody, I'll see you in the next video. Most importantly, I'll become a trash mammal today, and I will see you a rundown.